Welcome to Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the old Den of Tools. And today we've got a topic that you all have been asking for for a long time. I'm sorry, it's taking me a while to get to it, but we're finally covering it. And that is, what is the best table saw that you can buy? But real quick, I want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, and that is Skillshare. They have an amazing online community for learning and exploring and being creative. Uh, but we'll talk more about that later. Well, here's the reality of it. And the reality is that best is a subjective term. Uh, are you a commercial woodworker? Are you looking for the the best table saw for a commercial space, maybe for a home shop, a, a two car, a one car garage, you're gonna have different uses there. Are you looking for best job site out on, you know, portability, take it somewhere, work on it. There's a lot of different bests out there. So we need to talk about what your best is. So basically we're gonna break this down into a, a few categories here. First thing we're gonna talk about are the big boys. These are what are referred to often as cabinet saws. All right, and cabinet saws are the big, top of the line, full boat, no compromise table saws. They, they run like butter. They're the one you can sit a, a quarter on its edge and won't fall over. They're fantastic saws, and they're always a dream to work with. They often take 220 power. Uh, they could, you know, single or triple phase, you know, three to five horsepower motors. They cost an arm and a leg. They take up a huge amount of space. Uh, and, but they are fantastic. And then we also have to talk about job site table saws. These are a, a more portable kind of table saw, something often that's set up on a stand like this. You can take with you. Uh, you can roll it around and that kind of stuff. And then the third category really is compact table saws. And these are actually technically called compact job site saws. Now, what sets these all apart? Well, the first thing we got to talk about is trunnions. I know you're like, what the snot is a trunnion? Is this something the pigs snuffle for? No, no, no. Not quite the same thing. Those are truffles. Tasty, but not the same thing. So what we got here is, this is the, the and this is, as you can see, it says saw stop. So this is a saw stop uh, cabinet saw. And this is all the mechanisms and how that motor is attached to the blade and all that mechanism, how it moves and tilts and goes up and down. That whole mechanism is then bolted directly to the, uh, the cabinet of the saw. And you'll see in a, in a situation like this, this is an older kind of saw, but you can see all those mechanisms are bolted directly to the cabinet. That's what defines a cabinet saw. Now, every other saw you're going to talk to is usually referred to, or at least used to be referred to, as a contractor saw. And a contractor saw, that trunnion is mounted directly to the bottom of the table of the saw itself, to the cast iron plate or aluminum plate or whatever the main saw plate is where the blade comes up through. It's mounted directly underneath that. Now, that's a less expensive way to do it, but it adds vibration directly to that. So it makes it a little bit less accurate. And that's why high-end woodworkers and professionals like those cabinet saws, because it reduces the vibration, the dampening, puts it down in the cabinet, and leaves the table as smooth and an un unbothered as possible. Now, this can get really confusing when you look at a saw like this. You may look at a saw like this and go, well, it has a full cabinet there, so clearly this is a cabinet saw. However, this isn't. This is a contractor saw, often referred to in this style as a hybrid because the body looks like a cabinet. It's kind of set up like a cabinet. But the reality is the trunnions and the whole blade mechanism are mounted to the underside of this table. Now, here's where it gets really head scratching. You look at something, oh, say, like a like this saw here, and you're like, well, clearly that then is also a contractor grade saw because it's the same kind of setup. No, this this is actually a cabinet saw. In fact, this is one of the best deals you can find when looking for used saws. This is the old rigid. Now they were sold, I think they're made by Emerson actually, uh, but they were sold under the rigid name, under the uh, craftsman name. I think they even saw it under Daytona. The secret of this saw is that the top, rather than being made of cast iron, is actually made of granite. And because of that, they could not mount the trunnions to, to the table. It would, it would crack the granite. So they had to mount it to the cabinet. And a lot of people that will sell these for fairly dirt cheap on Craigslist. So keep an eye out for those. So moving along, then we talk about the, 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 you know, these were often referred to as contractor saws. Also, uh, they're now referred to as job site saws. This is what I often consider like 
the middle of the road kind of saw. It, they're often big enough that you could use it as a, as a decent you know shop saw. You can fold it up and get you know put it up against the side, hang it somewhere, get out of the way. You can also take it with you in case you had a project to go and do. The one rule is you always want to remember here is you always want to use the biggest saw you can get your paws on. If you need portability, then by all means go with a contractor or even a compact you know table saw. But if you've got the space, you want a stationary saw. That's just all there is to it. The rule of thumb, if you want to keep your thumbs, use the biggest saw you can. And that brings us to the uh, the old compact table saw or compact job site saw. Now, these things are fantastic for those specific uses. They're lightweight considering, you know, all things considered. They, they usually have these and the, all the job site saws, rather the middle size and the smaller ones, they usually have an aluminum or aluminum composite table. Uh, so there's no cast iron. Again, they're trying to make them lightweight for portability, but there really isn't much to these things. You look at the back and you can clearly see it's a plastic shell with an aluminum plate on top. And, and with the, I saw direct, a direct drive saw right in there that is running the system hung directly under, uh, you know, under the, the, the plate there, the table. Now I'm not, you know, this is the one from Harbor Freight. I'm not nagging on them specifically. All the saws in this category can be made exactly the same. In fact, even all the way down to the old, as I like to call it, the Finger Slicer 2000 here. Uh, and Harbor Freight is not the only one who makes a saw like this. Uh, Ryobi's made saws like this. Craftsman, tons of companies have made saws like this. I, I'm not a fan of them. They're small. They're janky. The, uh, the fence on them is, is ridiculously hard to operate at times. And, and fun fact with this one, if you zoom in real close, you can see that the... Uh, the, the saw is not actually mounted to the stand. This has been on Harbor Freight's website for years and years and years. I've been meaning to call them out about it, and I keep forgetting to. But, but this saw does not fit that stand. You'd have to put the saw bolted to a piece of wood and then bolt the wood to that stand. But somebody in Harbor Freight's marketing thought it would be cute to do this. I don't get it, but you know, I think actually it's been discontinued, so I guess they, they dodged a bullet on that one. Anyway, let's talk about the big saws, okay, the cabinet saws. I'm going to give you a couple options here if you're looking at cabinet saws. Now, the big boy that everyone talks about, especially if you're on YouTube, because they were giving these things away like candy a few years back, and that is the saw stop. All right. Now, saw stop was an invention the guy came up with. Uh, I did a whole video on saw stop, so I'm not going to get into the history of it. Uh, but he, nobody, he thought somebody would buy it, buy, buy the patent. They didn't buy the patent. So he started his own company, just said, screw you guys. I'm going to go it alone. And he did it. And he's made actually a really good table saw. Now, I'm not going to say it's the best table saw out there, but it is an exceedingly good saw. And of course, it has that saw stop instant, you know, safety functionality where if the if your hand or in anything connected to the body part comes close to the blade, just even barely nicks the blade, it drops down. And, uh, you know, and it never, you know, you never get cut or hurt or anything. You keep your digits where they are, where they're supposed to be, which is great. However, I will say this, that kind of injury is not the number one injury you see from a table saw, but we're going to talk more about that later. So these are good saws, but they're not fantastic saws. I, I've talked to a lot of professionals who use it and they, they say they have to use it due to insurance because it gets their insurance rates down. But if they could, they would ra much rather use something like a Delta Unisaw. Now, Unisaw is an old name when it comes to table saws. They've been around for a long time. My grandfather, I can still remember as a little cub standing in his shop and being in, in awe of his Delta Unisaw. And uh, Delta's gone up. They've gone down. They, you know, A lot of people say they're not the company they used to be. And they're not because I can tell you about four or five years ago, they got bought by a Taiwanese company who they're super excited about what they're doing over there. I've actually been talking to them. I got some stuff I'm going to be showing you guys here uh, over the next month here uh, from Delta. And uh, unfortunately, not the table saws. But I got to tell you, these things are fabulous. I've been a fan of Delta for years. If you've been around the channel, you know that. Uh, and I, I lamented along with you that the, their decline, and I'm super glad to see them. Uh, with new ownership that's excited, that's investing in the company, and you're seeing the quality come back there. So you're looking at a five horsepower Unisaw here, 52 inch Bessemer fence. I always mispronounce that. Don't correct me. I'm never going to change. I'm that kind of, you know, I'm an old school bear. Once I get it stuck in my craw, that's just the way it's going to be. But I always think of it as a T square style fence. 
These things are a dream to work with. And you'll always see this style fence on all the high end kind of table saws. And that's, that's what I grew up learning how to use. It's what I'm used to and it's what I like. If you like some of the other styles, that's great. You're allowed to be wrong around here. I, I'm not gonna stop you from being wrong, but this is the best style of fence out there. Anyway, so that's your second option. Your third option, if you're looking for a budget option, is uh, was with Grizzly. No relation, you know, it's not a cousin or anything like this, but Grizzly Industrial Tools. They make some fabulous stuff. I'm a huge, huge fan of their band saws, huge fan of the band saws, but their table saws are fantastic as well. And they're some of the best bang for the buck when it comes to these larger table saws. Now here's a three horsepower, 240 volt cabinet saw, full cabinet saw, full bolt, bolt, <laughs> full, full boat, everything you want here. Uh, now it doesn't have the extended table and all that, but this is the good core system that you could build on. And you can get this for $1,400. Now that's a sale price right now. Normally it's $1,500. You're getting $100 off uh, on, you know, but they have sales throughout the year. So you can always look up one of these, just wait around. Uh, you know, hopefully you can, you have the opportunity to wait. I always recommend looking online, looking on Craigslist, Facebook marketplace, stuff like this. We're going to talk about used saws here in a bit, but if you, if you want to get one and you don't want to spend the two or three or more thousand dollars, but you want a cabinet saw, this is a great one to go with. Let's say you don't want to spend that kind of money, but you want a stationary table saw. I hemmed and hawed over this. I was going to have a whole bunch of different options for you. I'm sorry. There is only one option. If you want a stationary table saw and you're a DIYer to uh, prosumer grade kind of, kind of, you know, uh, woodworker or, you know, sh you have your shop and you want to have a good solid saw that this is the saw to have. This is it. This is the Delta table saw that you buy over at Lowe's. It's $600. It's been that price or around that price for years and years and years. I had the original version. This is the Mark II version. I had the first version of this. I absolutely love this saw for the money. Uh, it, it's, it's not a high-end saw. You know, it's not 220. It's not running on three horsepower. You're getting just under one and a half horsepower, which is honestly the most you're going to get out of 110. If somebody tells you it's a three horsepower and it's running on 110, uh-uh, it doesn't work that way. Okay, there's only so much juice they can fit through that pipe if you get what I'm saying here. This is a fabulous saw. It's got the right kind of fence on it. It's got a good solid motor. Now, they did have some issues when they first released this. They had bad capacitors on some of the motors. They figured that out. They, they recalled those, uh, the, the ones that they were shipping out there. They're under warranty if you get one and it dies. And they usually, when they die, they die quick, like within the first couple of months. So it shouldn't be an issue. They know about it. I've talked to them about it. They, they say that they've replaced all the ones that were, that were in stock that they knew of. If somehow you got some new old stock and you get one that's got a bad motor or, or you buy one that's used and it's got a bad capacitor on it, contact them. Should still be under warranty. These have not been out that long. Anyway, it's, it, it's not an issue going forward, and it's a fabulous saw. If you've been around the channel, you know I recommend this saw all the time. I can't say enough about it. All right, now let's say you need something a little bit smaller. Say you need some portability or often what I hear is, hey Bear, I got a smaller shop or I don't use a table saw all that much. That's a big one that I hear, which is, you know what? I need a table saw every now and then, but I don't need it every single day. I need something I can get out of the way. Then what you want is you want a job site table saw, one of the, the bigger job site table saws. In fact, you know, as I always say, I've said it before, the bigger the better, right? So this is the Metabo HPT that I've been talking about. Now, the nice thing about this saw, now this is currently listed at 569. Hold your horses before we get into that. Um, th this has got a system, if you like, I'll try to show there, you can't really see it here on, on this picture. Uh, maybe I can show it on another picture there. The, uh, it's got a, <laughs> it's not a cooperative, it's got a table saw fence system that's similar to the DeWalt. So it's that geared kind of mechanism. Now, if you like that, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm, I'm used to this, this inner T style, T square style fence. But if you like that sort of thing, this has got it. It's got an outfeed extension. It comes with the stand with the rollers and everything else. This is a fabulous saw. It comes with a good solid warranty. It comes with everything you're going to need. It's got the guard. It's got the kickback protectors. It's got the riving knife system. Uh, it's got a great extension there on the, on the, uh, the fence as well. This is a fabulous saw and we've seen it before under 400 we saw it around 350 and then for a hot moment there we saw it for under 200 dollars holy cow 
That's not something I think we're likely to see again until maybe Black Friday next year. That said, Acme Tools right now has this saw listed for $300. Now there is a $50 or $49 special handling charge. So it's going to be two, let's call it 250 for rounding. Here's the caveat. Currently out of stock until January 15th. Uh, so which means that you can order it now uh, and you'll get it mid-January. I know it, it sucks having to wait a month to, to get it or just over a month. But at that price, uh, you might want to consider locking it in. Will it be down around that $300 price again at Lowe's or something like this? Maybe. And I have seen people go to Lowe's with this ad and be like, Will you price match? And some managers are like, well, it's out of stock, so no, we're not going to price match. Or they'll say, well, there's a $50 handling charge, so we'll price match at, at $250. But I've also, or $350. I've also seen guys in our Facebook group, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, have no idea why not because you're missing out on the deals. But I have seen guys there showing receipts, pictures of receipts, where they got the sales manager or the, the floor manager to, to uh, price match at that $299 price which is great because they're out of stock. So anyway, that's just an option. I would say if you're looking for a mid-size, you know, foldable, portable job site saw, that's a great way to go. Now we got to talk about the little guys, which are the compact table saws. And people always say, well, what about the DeWalt, the DeWalt, the DeWalt? Now DeWalt has been for a long time the king of compact table saws, and they make a really good table saw. I do have some issues with DeWalt, uh, mostly with... The um, uh, I'm not first of all I'm not a fan of of the uh, ratcheting style fence, but if you like it, that's great. Uh, I always think of it as kind of like training wheels for woodworkers. Uh, if you're just ripping wood, and that's what these are for, really these are just for ripping wood. Yes, they have it set up so you can rip plywood with it. I've ripped plywood with this saw. It's not a fun experience. You want to use two people or a person and a bear or whatever you got here that's going to help you. You want to have two, you know, four sets of paws on this because if you're ripping sheet, uh, sheet goods that, uh, you know, full size sheet goods, four by eight, th this is a really small tool. All right. And it does not have a big base on it. And all, and that's not just the DeWalt. That's all compact uh, job site sauce. Um, and, but my other issue is that DeWalt customer service has not got really good reviews. We've seen issues with it. Uh, I've talked to lots of people, and then you can look it up online for yourself. They have an average uh, rating of like 1.2 stars. So, you know, but anyway, let's uh, not won't harp on them. If that's what you want, this is the new top line. This is the replace the old, I think it was the 7480. We now have the 7485. So that's the new boy in the block. Next up, we're going to talk about the Rigid. Rigid makes an excellent little job site compact table saw here. Uh, 15 amp, 10 inch. There's, you're going to see about the same specs on all of these. Uh, it, it is a really good quality saw. And at two, 280, man, it's hard to beat that price. I've seen, also seen it at 300 where it comes with the stand, but it's a little what we call like the scissor legs or the spider legs. Not a fan of those stands. They're really not the most secure kind of thing. Uh, but you know, if that's what you want, that's, you know, that's up to you, but 279. And then of course I have to talk about the Harbor Freight, the Hercules I've got, I've done videos on, I still have it. Uh, I use it, you know, anytime I need a table saw, this is the saw I have right now because, you know, we bounce back and forth between Vegas and Montana. So I need a saw that's fairly portable. I would love to get, I know I used to have that Delta, the Lowe's Delta $500 table saw, fabulous table saw. In fact, I used to have a jet. Uh, just top line. In fact, I've got four or five videos about some of the, you know, buying old uh, table saws, fixing them up and stuff like that. I'll try to link them down below. There's a whole series. Uh, I think I have a playlist on that I'll link. Um, but anyway, th I like this saw. Some people like these saws. Some people don't like them. Uh, again, it comes down to usually the fence on this. $329, it's an okay price. $300 when it goes down that. We've seen these around $250. At $250, it's a no-brainer. Uh, it's a it's a great deal on that saw. And speaking of deals, I need to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, and that is Skillshare. Online learning is quickly becoming a primary source of education, and Skillshare is leading the way. Their community allows millions of creative people to join together in learning and even inspiring others. They offer classes on a wide variety of topics. You'll not only learn, but you'll also interact through class projects. One of my favorite features is that they're also adaptive to fit your schedule. That makes it perfect for busy tool bears like me. My family has always believed that learning is not a destination, it's a journey, and that you're never too old to learn new tricks. 
Now, Skillshare offers, as I said before, a wide variety of topics. Some of my favorite are photography, cooking, and productivity. A class I recently finished was the Productivity Masterclass, How to Do More While Working at Home. Yeah, we all know how 2020 is going. And as wonderful as it sounds to be able to work from home, it does come with some significant challenges. Those are how to stay focused and say be productive while being at home. And classes like this are helping me do just that. Members get access to thousands of ad-free classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions, all for less than $10 a month. And the first 1,000 people who click the link in my description below will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. All right, so that covers what I recommend as far as, you know, the best saws to buy, you know, going right now, all right? Now, let's get into the FAQ section because I, I'm going to cover a lot of things that people ask me about because, uh, you know, I can only answer so many questions in the comments. I try. The bear tries. But let's see if I can answer them before you even ask them. First thing is people are going to ask, what about used saws? Well, I need to do a whole video about how to buy a used table saw. But I recommend, as you heard me before, highly recommend looking at buying a used table saws. Here's the thing, though. There's some great old table saws out there. However, they're lacking the one major piece of safety equipment on the, I'm talking about most of the older, older saws. Some of the, some of the mid range ones still have it, but anyway, they're missing the one piece that's way more important than like you, you see than, than the saw stop thing where it yanks the blade down. The most important thing that's going to save your hide nine times out of 10 is a riving knife. All right. And a riving knife is a little piece of steel that rides right behind the blade. And what that does is it keeps the, the wood that you're cutting from pinching together and causing and, uh, kickback. And kickback is the most dangerous thing. In fact, the people who often get cut, get lose a finger or something like that to a table saw was because of kickback. They're reaching past the blade. You know, they got their little paws out there and they're reaching way out there past the blade trying to grab the outfeed. And it, it gets caught in the curve of the blade and it yanks their paw right back through it. And, uh, you know, and yes, the saw stop would stop that, but so will a riving knife. Because if you have a riving knife, you can't get that pinch, which means no kickback. This, this is the number one thing you're going to have. Now, some of the newer uh, saws out there, they have all the other safety equipment on it. But even if you take those off, because a lot of people don't like the guards and whatnot, even if you take all that stuff off, you still have this unit right here that all rides on, which is essentially, that's a riving knife with a mounting point on it for all the other little accessories. You don't use those other accessories? Fine, I'm not gonna, I'm not your dad, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I, I, I don't use them either, okay. Anyway, but this thing, and this is your riving knife, and that's what's gonna keep you safe. Now, people are, are always chime in anytime I talk about, well, riving knives, they go, well, what about splitters? You can get splitters, well, splitter, splitter, I, no. No, I'm sorry. Yes, they, they do work ish but here's the deal with the splitter that you're limited to the size of that splitter okay and then you got to change the splitter based on the curve of your blade I and mean, you could argue this with the riving knife thing whatever but the fact of the matter is here these do not rise to the height of the blade if you raise raise the blade up pretty high that that splitter is not going to rise with you and yeah there's some little you know diy kind of stuff no that's not the same kind of safety kind of mechanism you're going to get you can do it you could you know if if you're a, you know a frugal you know kind of a you know badger kind of person and that's what you want to do fine you you do you man but i'm going to tell you you want a riving knife bare minimum <laughs> i said bare minimum all right now accessories i get a lot of people saying well, you know, I want to look at this old, you know, this old table saw, so I'm, but it has a terrible fence on it. Uh, the tube style fences, you see those, those aren't the, the best. There's a lot of old style fences that, you know, you really want to upgrade. And you can buy an upgraded table fence, the table saw fence, like this Bezemir style, Bezemir, I don't know what it's called. They'll call it the T-square. Here's the Delta, Delta fence here. This thing is $200, all right? It, I know it kind of went off the screen. Let me see if I can get it over there. There you go. Oh, sorry. No, it's $184. All right. And this is off of Amazon. I'll put links to some of this stuff down below if I can. Only one left in stock. Hopefully there'll be more. I looked around some other places. You used to be able to find these at Home Depot all the time. And for some reason, they're not showing up. There's only a $400 kit over there, which is ridiculous. Now it gets you the full extension, the super long fence on it. If you want to add like a, a router table and stuff to the side, maybe that's what you want to go with. But then also Menards has the same system here for $200. All 
Now, here's the thing I'm going to say. If you're looking at an old table saw and you're like, well, I'm going to up, you know, say you pay 200 bucks for it and you're like, and I'm going to upgrade the fence. Well, now you're at 400 and you're going to upgrade, you're going to create a, uh, you know, buy a, a retrofit, a riving knife and you're going to do all this. You know, you're getting really close really quickly to that five, you know, $600 price. When this is on sale, it's often on sale for 550. You use some coupons. I've done some videos showing how you can get this down to $500. You know, are 450 for a used saw that you've had to put a bunch of work into and stuff versus just picking up one of these for five 500. And eh, it's a hard argument to make. Now let's talk about real quick. We're gonna be real quick on this. We're gonna talk about saw stop. By the way, yes. Besides cabinet saws, they also make a fantastic job site saw. It's a fifteen hundred dollar job site table saw, but it is fantastic. It has a true uh, T square style fence on it. it. It's a great saw. But the thing that people keep asking is, when is their patents going to run out? When am I going to be able to buy that, that same kind of safety mechanism from somebody else? Well, their patents expire in August of 2021. Well, their original patents, let's say this. They've got over 100 patents at this point, and they're doing, they're, they are lawyering up like nobody's business. Of course, they don't quite have the money that everyone else does. And trust you me, every other company that makes a table saw has already fully developed and is ready to roll out a saw stop copy all right they've got it it's sitting in the works they're just waiting for these patents to expire to roll these things out and there are some things that saw stop can try and do to extend these patents but i guarantee you that the uh, these companies are going to be luring up as well they want part of this market as well that saw stop created it uh, and they 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 want to you know drink their milkshake and they're going to do their best. In fact, Bosch even already tried. They jumped the gun with the Bosch React system, which actually is a really good system. It actually does the same thing without damaging the blade, so it saves you a few bucks. But that said, they got banhammered, uh, you know, over the uh, the uh, the patent infringement on that one. They had to pull it off of store shelves. But that said, it it's coming. Is it going to be next year? Is it going to be 2022? Is it going to be 20? I don't know. It depends on how much of an extension they manage to weasel out. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Don't worry. The bear will stay on top of it. All right. The next thing people always ask me about is, can I use a dado stack with this saw? And, and inevitably, and I don't know why, they're always asking when it comes to compact job site saws. And my answer is always the same. Uh, maybe look at, look at the manual, but honestly, you know you shouldn't. <laughs> This, using a dado stack with one of these is like turbocharging, you know, uh, uh, a, a Yugo. You, could you do it? Yes. Should you do it? Probably not. Probably not very safe. I, I'm sorry, but these are small saws and, in you know, they, they don't really have the table space, much less the stability. I mean, look at this. Look at the legs on this thing. This is this is one of those little scissor stands I'm talking about. You do not want to be running a dado stack through something like this. If you need to be doing a dado kind of cut, a rabbit or whatnot, you need to be using a, a router and a straight edge. It's just that simple and safe. Oh my gosh, why would you not use this? Get a nice flat surface, get a straight edge, and get your router out. There's all sorts of little router mounting plates that you can get. Um, you know, Rockler makes one. Now, granted, Rockler can be a little pricey, but there's cheaper options out there also. I found this one on Amazon for $34.11. There's all sorts of options you can do to do this safely. You can get a better, cleaner cut doing this. It, it's safer. You don't have to worry about hurting anybody. And it gets you a chance to, you know, buy another tool if you don't already have a router. <laughs> all right. Now, some of the accessories I want to talk about real quick is miter slot uh, or miter gauge uh, slot tools here and two things the smaller job site compact saws as you can see here they use this little thing where it's got a, a, a slot on it you're often going to be limited to that style of, of tool if you've got one of these smaller compact job site table saws when it comes to the regular job site the folding you know like the metabo that's kind of hit or miss 50 50 whether they've got the t square or the t slot on there whether it's just a standard slot you'll have to check uh, your saw but that said there's some great options out there if you want to upgrade. Incra makes some fantastic stuff. You may need to, need to be a mathematical genius to understand how to use the whole thing, but no, they, they do make some fabulous stuff. It's not inexpensive. 
you're looking at $200, which considering all the things you get with this Incra setup is, is really not that bad. It's, it's a fabulous, you know, miter gauge. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. I think you can do your trig homework with it if you wanted to. Another one is Craig. Craig, you know, every time you see this blue and the nice aluminum, you know you're dealing with a Craig product. You know you're dealing with quality. They make really good stuff. Um, it, it's a little more <laughs> simple, if you will, but it still does a lot of the same things. It's $150 there. Uh, it's got the, the movable stop block on it. It's got the, 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 the small, you know, the minute adjustment angles on it. It's got the fence that goes along with it, so you can use it kind of like a, a miter sled. Uh, it, it, it is a really a good system. Now, one of my favorite ones is the old Shopsmith miter gauge. Now, believe it or not, uh, this thing's been around for probably longer than me, and I've had a few of these, and they're fantastic. The nice thing about it is when you grab this, first of all, it's got a nice angle on it. You can get a full paw right on there. And when you grab this, it clamps this, and this part comes down and, and clamps the workpiece. So it holds it in place. Now, you don't have to use it. You can move it out of the way or something like that. But it gives you a really firm grasp rather than when you're talking about using one of these and you're just grabbing the handle on that and everything. And the ergonomics, so you got a nice straight handle. You're going to have to get low down on that to get a, a good angle grip. This is more of an ergonomical uh, ergonomical is that the word ergonomic grip there now one thing a lot of people don't realize is now this is with most miter saw gauge or miter yeah miter gauge miter saw anyway the, bear, the bears had a long week uh, miter gauge saws is that these little parts here are so you can put a wood fence on there and uh, bolt it through onto this and create that kind of same situation that you see with something like this so you can adapt it to that. Now, as far as buying one of these, I really recommend, you know, Craigslist, Marketplace, and, and eBay when you're looking for it. If you want to buy one new, they're $114, $115 if you want to buy it directly from ShopSmith. All right, now some of the other options here you probably want to consider. If you really want to get your, your, your saw dialed in, uh, you want to get one of these magnetic bases with a dial uh, indicator. Now, this is the one that I have. I've had this for, I, I bought it in January of 2018. I've used it for a lot of saw setups and whatnot. Anytime you get stationary power tool equipment, you need to go through and tune it. All right. That, that's a term you're going to hear. You got to tune your equipment. And that means making sure everything's square, everything's lined up. When things get shipped, things adjust, they move around. Often they come in, in pieces and you got to put it together yourself. Now, the job site, especially like the compact job site saws, often aren't quite as in, often an issue. Very often you get them out of the box and they're just square and ready to go because they know the guys buying them or taking them right to a job site often want to get right to work. But you do need to check. Always double check and make sure that, you know, your fence is square to the blade. The blade is square to the table. And this is a great way to check to make sure that your, your saw is properly aligned, uh, your blade's properly aligned. And this is $30 for something like this. And you'll use it on a lot of stuff if you have a shop. You can use it on drill presses. You can use it on miter gauge. You use it on, on tons of stuff. Now, this is not a super high-end piece of equipment. It may look like it, but it's not. This is for woodworking if you're going to be doing, you know, if you're working off of a mill or something, you're going to need a higher piece of, of, of equipment to calibrate that. This is, this I would not use this for, for mill work. I would use it for woodworking. Another good piece of safety equi equipment is a feather board. And what a feather board does is it lightly applies pressure to keep the, the workpiece where it's supposed to be as it moves through the tool. Uh, you can pick up one of these here off of Amazon for $13.00. Uh, you can mount them not just uh, on the fence to hold it down, but you can also mount them in the table to hold it against the fence. Uh, people often use both of them, well, two at a time, to keep it down and against the fence while pushing through on the push stick. Now, I'm not going to recommend a push stick because people really get personal and all bitey when it comes to push sticks. Do your own thing when it comes to a push stick, whatever you like. Just make sure you have one. I will say this, though. Now, one option I, I will say you might want to consider is one of these gripper things. I know for a, they advertised really hardcore on YouTube for a, a long time, but this thing, it, it looks like a heck of a ridiculous contraption. It really does. But the reality is, look at that. It lets you lock the, the, the workpiece in where you want it to go and push it right through and get your paws out of the way, out of, out of danger. And uh, I don't know why you wouldn't want to grab some one of these. Now, they are $60. Maybe that's why. But I think keeping your digits in $60 is, is a, it's a fair compromise to make. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff here you might want to get. 
Uh, this, I'm a huge fan of this. I've got one of these in my shop. I use it for all sorts of stuff. It's a magnetic angle gauge uh, device. Literally, the base of it, right, uh, <clears throat> sorry, right here, uh, has a magnet on it. And I put it right, as I bring my saw blade up, I put it right on the saw blade. I zero it, and, and uh, or I zero it off the table, put it on the saw blade, and then I can tell you exactly what the angle is, you know, compared to what I'm, you know, what it, it you know, it's supposed, allegedly says on the gauge on the saw. Uh, especially when I'm dealing with compact uh, table saws, um, stuff that gets moved around a lot, it gets bumped, it may not be exact. I almost never use the gauge that's on the saw. I always use this, and at $27, there's no reason not to get one of these if you're using your uh, table saw like that because this is what's going to ensure that you're getting the cut that you think you're getting. If you're upgrading an older saw, I highly recommend you drop the $40 or whatever to get one of these uh, V-twist belts. They're, they're little segmented kind of things. They're weird belts. I, I'll be honest, I was hesitant when I first saw them. I thought, there's no way. That doesn't make any sense. They're smoother. They are. They look like they would run bumpier and whatnot. I don't know how they do it, but they're just, first of all, you, could take, you, you just take out the links uh, to make it the size you want. They run much smoother than a standard V-belt or groove belt. Uh, they just do. And I, I don't understand the physics behind it. Maybe somebody who, uh, who's smarter than me can explain it. But the fact of the matter is they work better. Uh, and they don't cost that much, and it's a really good upgrade if you are, you know, fixing up an older saw. All right, and outfeed is a big issue. It's one of the things I talked about. It's one of the reasons I recommend the Metabo. Uh, it's got an extension outfeed. Uh, it's got an outfeed extension. How about that? But also, if you're dealing with really long stuff and you're running it through the saw, having something like this, it's also good for miter saws and that kind of stuff. But if you're running some long stuff through your table saw, having something like this is really useful. Uh, it's going to add to your safety. And at $18, 17 dollars this is a Harbor Freight. Uh, it, there's not a whole lot to it. It's basic. It works. Uh, it's the Hallmaster 132-pound capacity roller stand. I don't know if you'll be doing 132 pounds on it. But, hey, give it a shot. Let me know how it works out for you. All right. Now, a lot of people talk about what do I do to protect the surface of my table saw. And one of the tried and true ways that people do is uh, paste wax, just like you'd use on your car kind of stuff. You rub it on in a circular motion, you let it dry, you buff it off. Now, the thing is, uh, it, you're going to have to do this probably multiple times per year. Now, this is really only for cast iron tops. If you've got a job site table saw, chances are it's got an aluminum top and it's already sealed in some sort of epoxy resin thingy. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, but I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this because uh, it, it often has to get reapplied very often. Uh, and the finish can be, yeah, I don't know. There's some people who like it, who swear by it. I'm not a fan of it. Um, some of the other options you may have here rather than this is uh, this uh, Bow Shield. I don't know if that's how I pronounce it. Bow, bow Shield. Bow Shield. T9 Rust and Corrosion Protection. Uh a lot of people swear by that. Uh, the uh, and also a fluid film is another one uh, that, that people really like. You can spray it on, keeps it nice, nice and safe. You know, if you're in an area where you get a lot of corrosion and stuff like that, this may be something you might want to look into. I've used in the past spray on polyurethane. People have tried wipe on, you know, or brush on polyurethane. I don't like that. I just use a light coat of spray on polyurethane. Uh, and uh, I've not had any problems. Of course, I've also been in some of the more arid regions, so that might have been part of the, the cause as to why I didn't see those same, same kind of problems that others had seen with it. Now, somebody always asks me about this thing. This is There's several companies that sell this. This is a combination miter saw, table saw, and if you haven't seen one and you're living in the United States, there's a reason why, and that's, I'm pretty sure it's because OSHA said no to this thing. This thing is not the safest thing. In fact, uh, when that blade is down in there in the, in the miter saw configuration, you have to have the, the, uh, the fence slid over it to cover it because that's what covers the top of the blade to keep it safe so you don't take your arm off or something. The only time I've seen this configuration legitimately used in a situation where I'm like, hey, that's not, that's not a bad solution for that, is in people who install flooring. All right, they're often having to cut trim pieces 
or chop, you know, the end of the length. So here you got a tool that will do all, you know, you'll do miter cuts, you'll do chop cuts, and you'll do rip cuts on all of it. Great for installing flooring, maybe even for like, you know, siding, paneling kind of stuff for, for those kind of tools. For the home user, no, 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 no. In fact, I think for most people, just just say no. I mean, there's every once in a while some company pops up that's importing it to the U.S., and then after a couple of years, uh, you know, so, somebody from the government gets wind of it and says, no, those things are not approved for sale here in the U.S. All right, well, there you go. And there you have it. There's your kind of buyer's guide, your best uh, options for table saws, as well as some of the, uh, you know, ins and outs, the little FAQ, as well as your best accessories. I hope you liked it. If you do like this and you'd like to see the bear cover other types of equipment, uh, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you want to see me do a buyer's guide on next, and we can talk about all of that stuff. Anyway, I know it's been a long video, so I'm going to let you go. The bear's going to get out of here. Don't forget to chomp that like button on your way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, come on, say it with me. Shine on.